Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is React.js full tutorial series for absolute beginners. Today we are going to learn an important concept in React which is pure and impure components. It is very very important to understand what these are and why they are in certain way and how they affect the behavior of your application. Since you are a beginner, even if you are an experienced developer, you would want to understand these concepts because it will decide how you will implement your application. Right? That's why this topic is extremely important today. Let's get started. This is part 18 of the series. If you have missed out on the first 17 episodes, check out the playlist I have created. It covers everything from scratch to advanced that you need to learn to master React. All right, so today first we'll learn about pure components, then we'll learn about the impure components, then we'll do a comparison, and I'm also giving you some of the examples of where these stand. Let's start with the pure components. So pure components are components that don't depend on external factors and will always produce the same output for the same input. This statement may be a little confusing to beginners, but let me repeat it in a different way. In other words, you can say pure components will always give the same output for the given input. Let's say you write a method which says addition of two numbers. Now if you pass the same input which is 2 comma 2 as params, the output will always be 4. Unless you are from other planet, that could be different but in this planet 2 plus 2 will always be 4. That means that method or that component is pure. In React, if you see by default the components are pure, which means when you give a certain input, they'll always have the same output. Why is that way? Because they will be optimized for performance and will prevent any unnecessary re-rendering, right? Which implementing like shallow props, state comparison, etc. React's pure component class is an optimized version of a class component that automatically performs a shallow comparison of props and state. So in background, React will always run that optimized version. So if your input is same, the output will always be same because it has been optimized. Using pure components can reduce rendering and improve the efficiency of your application. Pure components are particularly useful when you are dealing with large list or data that need to be updated frequently. Okay, So remember, React components are by default pure. That means when you pass the same input, the output will be same. And they are more optimized, they improve the performance of the application. Now let's talk about impure components. Impure components can produce different outputs for the same input. Now this can happen due to various reasons such as let's say your state of the global application has changed a lot of components will get changed or something will vary regular class components or functional components without optimization checks are considered impure by default let's say you know that a component is always giving different value for a given input right now what are these scenarios i'll talk about that also but understand that if a component is giving different outputs for a same input it's an impure component okay now the techniques like optimization caching in the background those things won't happen for impure components but we need to essentially optimize them also right at the end of the day it's all about how much memory space it's taking how optimized how good it is for the performance it may lead to you know performance effects or re-rendering a lot of times in the view which causes application to slow down. Now I'm going to walk you through some of the key differences first and then I'll give you examples of the of pure component and impure component. Pure components rely on shallow comparisons to determine if re-rendering is necessary. Impure components can re-render even if props or state haven't changed due to external factors. Pure components are better suited for rendering when input data remains unchanged. Impure components handle changes in external data or side effects but need to be optimized to avoid unnecessary re-renders. That's the key difference between 
pure component and impure component. Now, what are the best practices, right? Uh, let's say the best practice is that use pure components whenever possible to improve performance. That's the given rule. For impure components, consider memory memorization techniques like state management libraries or using hooks like use memo, etc. Now, let's say examples, right, of a pure component. An example of pure component, like I said, could be a button, right, which receives some data and displays some alert message or something, which will not change, right? That's a classic example of a pure component. Now, talking about example of an impure component, right? Now, you have a component which fetches data from an API, right? That data can change based on the inputs, right? So your input data, when you give something based on user's location, based on user's roles and responsibility, that data might be different. That means you're based on that external data that can change, right? So that becomes a impure component. That means it's not fixed. The output can vary, right? That's where it becomes impure component. All right, so take an example of this code. Now, let's say you have a, a component that we built in the last episode, which is bank component. Now here we are passing props, but for this, the output can be different for different scenarios. If the activist falls, it can give something else, right? If else, if the active is true, it can render admin component or it can give you null value. So there is no guarantee that the output will be same all the time. It can differ based on the props or the input. So this becomes an impure component, okay? Because there is no proper guidance or say there is no fixed output to it based on the in based on different values that we pass. The out the component can render differently, right? Let's say tax a component. Now based on the different input value, it can change. Based on the input country, it can change based on the status it can change, based on the age that can be different. So there is no fixed output or base even based on these conditions, right? It's calculated dynamically. So in those cases, you can say it's more like an impure component because the data is highly changed. Whenever you send an in input data, output may be different based on certain conditions, right? So that becomes an impure component. But if you talk about a general simple component, let's say this one, Whenever you call this component, it will always re return this simple statement, which is search results bar. This is a pure component because the output will never change. Whenever this component is called, the output will always remain this statement. So this is an example of a pure component. So remember the key difference. Whenever you pass an input, if output remains same, it is a pure component. Whenever we pass input, the component output is different based on the same input it can still it's called a impure component that's more about the how in theoretically we will uh, analyze and design our components when you're building a complex application or a real-time enterprise project i hope the concept is clear i hope um, you are now familiar with the concept of pure and impure components Thank you so much for joining in this episode. In the next episode, we will learn about adding events, that is interactivity. So far, we have passed props. We haven't touched the events. Events are nothing but JavaScript events, like on click, on mouse over, etc., etc. We'll learn all about it in the next episode. So join me, and we'll continue learning in this series. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.